The Roush Cold Air that we have here today will be one of the most popular no tune required intakes on the site for your 2005 to 2009 V6 Mustang with well over 500 four and five star reviews. Now this intake will include the rotomolded plastic intake tube itself, along with your heat shield here and high flow oiled filter, which will help provide best case scenario gains of up to 28 horsepower and 17 pound feet of torque, according to the gang over at Roush. So Roush is obviously synonymous with Mustang performance and parts, so it's really no surprise that their cold air system for the S197 V6 Mustang is one of the most popular in the premium tier category by a pretty wide margin. Now, some of the big draws going here with the Roush will include the more modified but not over the top underhood appearance, big time increase in sound under acceleration, improved throttle response, and then finally, and maybe most importantly, big time power gains according to Roush. Again, up to 28 horsepower, 17 pound feet of torque without the use of any custom or can tuning. Now, another feature here of the Roush is that it is carb certified, meaning owners in all 50 states can take advantage of the Roush intake and all of its benefits. Now, as far as your construction is concerned, well, Roush typically nails their build quality and fitment, and the same can be said here, of course, for this particular intake. You're gonna be looking at things like the rotomoted plastic intake tube here, embossed with that Roush logo in a very subtle way, molded ABS plastic heat shield here, which does include some weather stripping to help seal to the underside of your factory or aftermarket hood. And that's what you're looking for because ultimately you wanna prevent that hot engine bay air from entering the high flow filter. Now this is a high flow oiled filter provided by s and is also embossed with the Roush name of course. And what you should know that is that these filters are washable, they are reusable, and they will essentially last you the life of your Mustang. You're just gonna need to clean it every you know, 50,000 miles, if not more, re-oil it carefully, uh, being careful not to over-oil the filter, and at that point, you're pretty much good to go. Always a good way to add some performance to the car, of course, but more importantly, prevent you from having to replace those cheap paper element factory filters every 10,000 miles or so. Now quickly moving into our pricing segment here, guys. And as I mentioned earlier, the Roush system will round out the higher end of the pricing spectrum, certainly falling into that premium category when we're talking intakes for the four liter V6. Now, this is one of those cases where the fit, the finish and performance certainly will help contribute to a higher price point when compared to some of your more budget friendly options on the site. But regardless, no matter what your budget, as always, feel free to browse our entire selection of intakes here uh, before making your final decision. But now let's move into the installation portion of our video, guys, and expect a very easy day in the garage or driveway. Simple one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter here is what you can expect, maybe an hour at most to complete from start to finish. But now we're actually gonna throw things to an AM customer for a detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown. Check it out. So the tools that are required for this installation are a 532nd and 332nd Allen wrenches, a 5 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths, and 10 millimeter sockets, a quarter inch ratchet, an extension, a 7 sixteenths wrench, and some side cutter pliers, a cordless drill to turn the clamps a little faster. The kit comes with a Torx bit, so I had a little socket to turn that, a flat screwdriver, to undo the clips on our uh, hose connections, a curved set of pliers to pull the PCV hose connector out, and a screwdriver type uh, ratchet holder. Today we are installing a Roush cold air intake on a 2005 to 2009 Mustang with the 4.0 V6 engine. Okay, first we are going to disconnect the negative battery cable. And that we just use a 5 16 socket. And there isn't a lot of slack, so I'm just gonna stick it on that piece of wood. And we can also use the 5 16 to loosen the clamp 
that goes to the throttle body. Get that loose. Now we need to disconnect this air hose and for that we just move this green clip right here and we can just pull this off and then we also need to disconnect the mass airflow sensor and if you just slide this red clip out it will unplug just like that okay now we need to remove this bolt that is between the air box and the fender and for that I'm just using a 10 millimeter socket and a couple extensions Bring this one out. And then set this bolt aside because we're going to use it later. Now we can lift the air box and hose assembly out all in one piece. And if you lift up here, give this some turns, break it loose, we're out. Now there are two rubber grommets on the bottom of the air box and we need to make sure we take those off because we're going to reuse them right here in the holes in the fender. Now included in the hardware kit is a little Torx bit that we just need to take out our mass airflow sensor so we can reuse it. Slide it out of the airbox assembly. And we're just going to set that aside. Now we need to remove this breather tube connection. And in the instructions, they say to cut the clamp, but I was actually able to just pry it off, pry it undone to get it off. And then if you grab a hold of this, I got some curved pliers. Oops. And get that out set that aside too. Now we're going to start assembling the cold air intake. And we'll start with the air dam. We can put our two rubber grommets on the pegs that are on the bottom of the air dam. And they fit back in the holes in the fender. Set that there for a sec. In the hardware kit is a aluminum spacer and a big washer. We'll put the washer on the bolt that we took out of the fender and we're going to, this hole here, we're going to sandwich the air dam between the spacer and the washer and then without dropping everything in the engine bay, we line it back up with the hole in the fender. Carefully. rubber grommets to seat and I'm just going to do this finger tight. Now we have to put a bolt through this hole here in the air dam. We'll put that through there and it goes through the core support on the car. We'll put a nut and a washer underneath it without dropping it. Just like that. So now we're going to add the air filter adapter to the air dam and you want to go from the inside out and then we'll use three Allen head screws and washers on the outside. And you have to clock this so you can find the hole. There's one. Can't see it. 
and then it just takes a 7 32nd Allen wrench to tighten them down. So now we're going to install our stock parts back into the new intake tube. So grab the rubber grommet that comes with the installation hardware and work it into the hole in the intake and then take our PCV hose connector that we took off earlier and put that into the rubber grommet like so. Then we are going to install our mass airflow sensor and there's a little nub on the top and if you put that on the top when you insert it then when we put the electrical connector on it'll be easy to hook up instead of being underneath and then the kit comes with two little allen screws and we'll want to put those in and don't use the ones that we took out of the stock mass airflow uh, they're a different thread so use the new ones and then once you put those in, then use the 3 32nd Allen wrench to tighten them down. Now we get to start adding our hose couplers. And the first one, they call this a hump hose. And you can go ahead and put the two clamps on either side. And then push it on until it's flush and then tighten the clamp down that's closest to the air dam, but leave this one loose. Then we'll go to the throttle body side and there's a reducer coupler and you can slide the little hose clamp on the little end and that goes onto the throttle body. Slide it on until it's good and flush. Tighten this clamp on. And then go ahead and slide on the larger size clamp. But don't tighten it down yet. Now we get to install our air intake tube. And we'll just start on the big end of the air dam and slide that in. And push the throttle body side in. Hold that in place and then you can go ahead and tighten this clamp down. That'll hold it. And then tighten the big side down next to the air box. And then we'll connect our PCV hose connector and that's got the little green clip on it and if you move it out of place push the hose on and then let the green clip fall into place give it a little tug make sure it doesn't come off and then the mass airflow sensor plug push that on until it clicks we're good. Now we can add our air filter and it's like a K&N open style filter, Roush logo on it. Let me just install that right into the air dam and tighten it down. It comes with its own clamp. Tighten that. And lastly, we have a California carb sticker. I'll put that on even though the state I'm in doesn't have emissions, but I'll put that on there. Also, what's included in the kit is a piece of weather stripping that goes on this edge right here. So we got our weather strip installed and our sticker. Uh, the weather strip is probably the hardest part of the whole installation, getting it to curve around the corner here. Um, went back and checked all our clamps, bolts, 
uh, connections, reconnected our uh, battery cable. So wrapping things up here, guys, if you are looking to add more power and sound to your V6 at home, be sure to consider the fan favorite Roush cold air intake available right here at AmericanMuscle.com.